Welcome to the monthly reload number 40. Some of our top headlines this month include how one word made Obama the president from zero to 110K Instagram followers in five months. Plus, I'm pretty sure they have around a 40% conversion rate. And then a 30 minute change that accidentally increased annual revenue by $61,000 per year. So what we aim to do with the monthly reload is get you caught up on what you might have missed in the month. So, and curate, I myself, Sweeney, the best posts, news, videos, articles, blog posts, slide shares, all that crazy jazz, and we put it together for you into this monthly reload, which you can watch via video, you can read on the blog over at digitaltriggers.io slash mr40, or you can listen on the podcast. So to start it off, Google launches its own mobile network for Nexus 6 owners. You pay only for the data that you actually use. So Google is now officially a mobile carrier. Today, the company has made official its plan to offer wireless service to owners of its Nexus 6 smartphone. It's called Project Fee, and Google is launching an early invite program beginning today. Similar to our Nexus hardware program, Project Fee enables us to work in close partnership with leading character, leading carriers, sorry, hardware makers, and all of you who push the boundaries of what's possible. So currently, for $20 a month, you get the basics, talk, text, Wi-Fi tethering, and international coverage in 120 countries. Then it's a flat $10 per gigabyte for cellular data while in the US and abroad. 1G is 10 a month, 2G is 20 a month, 3G is 30 a month, and so on. Since it's hard to predict your data usage, you'll get credit for the full value of your unused data. <clears throat> so if you go with the 3Gs for $30 and you only use 1.4Gs, you will get the 16 back. So you only pay for what you use. Now, it's safe to say that we are all really, really hoping um, for this and hoping uh, hoping that this works out. I think a lot of us are sick with our wireless carriers as much as we're kind of afraid to give away too much to Google. Hey, if you're gonna have a tyrant, you might as well have a nice tyrant. Next up, we have YouTube confirms plans for an ads-free subscription-based service. In an email to its partners, YouTube details plans to offer consumers the choice to pay for an ad-freeze version of YouTube for a monthly fee. YouTube will pay you 55% of the total net revenues recognized by YouTube from subscription fees that are attributable to the monthly views or watch time of your content as a percentage of the monthly views or watch time of all or a subset of participating content in the relevant subscription offering as determined by YouTube. If your content is included in and viewed by a user in multiple subscription offerings, YouTube will pay you based on the subscription subscription offering with the highest amount of net revenues recognized by YouTube as calculated by YouTube. Gets a little wordy there, but basically, in a similar way to Spotify, you're gonna get your cut of the pie. Now, I don't know what Spotify's payout is, but I have to say, YouTube taking 45% of the cut seems to be a bit much. I mean, even 60-40 seems a little bit more fair, but this is certainly one of those cases where you don't really have much of a choice, right? I mean, you're basically locked into YouTube. What else are you gonna use? Next up, Facebook announces embedded video player. So with the embedded video player, you can easily add Facebook videos to your website. You can use any public video post by a page or a person as a video source. Facebook continues their move into the video game. Now we have top stories, and this one is how one word made Obama the president. And yes, it is clickbaity, yes, it is hypey, but yes, it's kind of true. So A-B testing helped raise 690 million, which is part of the reason that Obama got into the office. It's almost become infamous in its own right now, the hey subject line that has been um, time and time again referenced in the Obama campaign because it was his highest converting subject line. Now, one of the other ones they talk about is um, how 
they had two subject lines here. I will be outspent. And the one thing the polls got right and the better email won by 529%. That's a that's over $2 million more in donations, which is pretty insane. They actually ran over 500 A and B split tests like these. Now, this is all brought to you as uh, Sumo Me is launching a new new tools. So well done by Subo Me to really capitalize on the hype and then divert into, hey, look at our new features. Next up, we have the Science of Persuasion. This is a video by Robert C. C. Adenelli. I, I forget how to say his name exactly. Sean Ellis talks about it. He said he loves Rob. It's a great 11-minute refresher on the six principles of influence. He also loves the Mint example. And it feels like a growth hacking experiment for food servers to get more tips. So this book, Persuasion by Robert, was, oh my God. I mean, this always referenced one of the greats. Time and time again, it's brought up. So if you haven't read it and you're, you know, you haven't gotten off your butt yet, the very least, you need to watch this wonderful doodle and 11 minute video. And anytime that you need a refresher, you can also check it out. Next up, we have insane Instagram follower growth. So from zero to 110K Instagram followers in five months. This is the growth story of Founder, which is actually a, I believe, digital magazine. But I could be wrong. And I think they also have a, let's see, they have an average of 20,000 um, call to action clicks per month. Pretty big. They do 5.8 posts per day. They've had over 1.43 million post likes, 61,000 post comments, about 78 per post. Pretty insane. And this has actually been their best growth channel and very crucial to their success. Next up, we have the replenishment email. And this is a e-commerce hack guaranteed to drive sales. So what is it? It's basically an email like need more food for Fluffy. You're almost out of dog food. It's just about time to reorder your 30 pound bag of dog food. Don't let Fido go hungry. Order in the next 24 hours and shipping is on us. Now this is something I've been um, dabbling with e-commerce for lack of a better term. And I've always hammered on my friends that are in e-commerce. I'm like, man, you know, especially the guys selling vitamins. I'm like, you need to be on that timetable so that you're always hitting them when they should be running out of their supply and reminding them. So this is a e-commerce hack that you can use. They talk about some different ways that you can use it in different markets. I do think that they kind of stay focused on the e-commerce aspect though. Then we have the 30 minute change that made 25% more people try Ghost, telling them what to click. Now this ended up generating a little bit over $60,000 in annual revenue for the team. And really all they tested, as you can see here in the video, is they used to have a very static page and now they have a more shiny page that really just tells you what to do, tells you where to click. And I mean, this does seem like conversion optimization 101, but how often do we forget to do some of the basics? So let this be a little reminder for you. Then we have Inside Automatic's remote hiring process. Now, Automatic is the company that is behind WordPress. And I'm pretty sure their valuation is around a billion dollars, give or take. Could be wrong on that. Don't quote me there. But what's interesting about them is they consistently hire the best people without ever having a single voice conversation with them. Now, that's pretty interesting. Their hiring process is fairly different than most companies. They don't schedule chats. They don't fly people out. They rarely even have a single voice call before people are hired. Most people think that's crazy, right? There's no way that can possibly be effective. But they um, handle, this guy is talking here. Here's some numbers. He handles all the design and growth hiring at Automatic. He began hiring about a year and a half ago. In that time, he's reviewed a total of 251 resumes. 63 of those have gone on to an interview, which is 25% of their applications received. 41 have been giving a trial, 65% of those who we interviewed. 
15 have gone on to a final interview, 37% of those who do a trial, and 14 of those have been hired, 93% of those who receive a final interview. And none of them who he's fired have none of them who he's hired have been fired, and zero have left the company voluntarily. A hundred percent retention so far. Pretty awesome. So they break down their process, the pre-screen, how they do it, second tier resume review, the interview, the trial, I believe, their final interview, and how they end it out. If you're in the hiring stages, check it out. Now, we also have a slide share. I told you, we bring you a diverse amount of content. And this is Why SEO That Used To Work Fails by Rand Fishkin of Moz fame. So if you're wondering about the shift in how SEO is going and why things that used to work really well no longer works, this is one for you. And then we have by Blogger Sidekick, everything you need to know about blogger outreach. And I will skip over the fluff here and tell you basically that if you want to get your content out there, you need to reach out to bloggers. If you want to get your product out there, bloggers are a great place to start with influence. Leveraging bloggers is awesome, but it's not so easy to do. So they really break it all down here, as you can see with this nice six-step plan, and they even have your little spreadsheet download and this is something I'm a big fan of. I've mentioned this many times in the past. This is just another approach on it, another way to do it, and it's very well put together. And now that brings us to tool time, tool time, tool time, tool time. So first we have your little uh, productivity app, and I'd like to make a quick shout out to Product Hunt. That is where I find all these cool tools most of the time. And this is called Lookup for Mac. And basically it's the 20-20-20 rule. Now I also wanna point out these incredible um, comics that they did here. So basically the 2020 time rule is that every 20 minutes for 20 seconds, you should look at something 20 feet away and that helps to reduce your eye strain. It helps to relax your eyes um, for whatever reason. I, I'm not gonna dig into the science, but it helps your eyes. Everyone knows about this. There's tons of different programs. I'm sure we've all heard of it. I think I was talking to my brother about it once too. He's like, oh yeah, you should do the 2020 rule. And I'm like, man, that just sounds so interruptive to my workflow. But they've really made a hell of an app here that really puts it together and it's almost like setting up Pomodoros. So instead of it kind of breaking your focus, hopefully it should help you stay more focused as well as reduce the eye strain. Now, I don't know, me, myself, I'm a little weary of anything that's going to, you know, kind of mess up my focus, but it seems very unobtrusive and a very good way to kind of take that mini little break, reduce your eye strain, and then jump back in. And I think you could really do kind of nice one-hour workflows, work stretches here and have a lot of success with it. All right, next up we have the iPhone killer, the secret history of the Apple Watch. So this is a pretty cool stories. Um, and so it kind of starts off here talking about a job hire that they had and you know super secrecy and all that, which is cool, but really they dig into how the iPhone watch or rather the Apple Watch is supposed to be the iPhone killer. And this is its pretty interesting. It's interesting to see um, a company that, you know, is aiming to kill one of their own products, right? And obviously all the talks about the uh, Apple Watch right now. So everyone's very interested. Next up, this one I'm sure you've probably heard about. Oops, had a little broken button there. But that is Amazon Dash. So the very cool button that you can place it, press it, and then get it get new stuff from Amazon. Amazon continues to make their buying process more seamless. I mean, just when we thought the one-click button, <laughs> one-click buys weren't quick enough, they came out with a button in your home. So that when you run out of laundry detergent, you can go click, and then boom, it'll be at your house. Next up, we have Sticker Mule wall graphics. So Sticker Mule, I guess, is pretty known for being sweet with the stickers. But now they also have wall graphics. Um, pricing wise, I don't know. Someone I showed it to said it seemed a little pricey. I don't know quite what's comparable. 
but they are custom made wall graphics. So it's made from a self adhesive fabric that looks awesome and it won't damage your walls. The custom wall graphics are the easiest way to add style to your home or office. A lot of the comments on Product Hunt were very supportive. They really like the company. And uh, I think a lot of offices are too dull. So man, whether it's your company logo or some dreams or some goals, whatever you want to throw on the wall, check out Sticker Meal. Next up, we have Fantastical 2 for Mac, the calendar app you won't be able to live without. So basically, it's the smartest, sexiest calendar app you've ever darn seen. Then we have Pexels Video. So this is videos.pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S dot -E -E com. And these are videos that you can use completely free, HD, that you can use everywhere. And they actually have a pretty diverse range, sun, industry, tech, food, people, streets. They have some green screen ones. Um, from what I've seen time and time again, the video landing pages always convert at higher rates, always do better, always do well. Doesn't surprise me because, I mean, look at video. Look at what YouTube's done. My first website seven years ago, all based on video. All my leads were generated by video. All my content was video. I mean... And that was seven years ago. So you can imagine the direction that the web has gone in since then. Next up, we have Helium, which is a floating browser for your Mac, floating browser window. So what it does is it's always on top. So they show it here as someone watching Family Guy while doing some coding. And I think this can be really useful for, well, one thing I'm interested in this is kind of coming to me now. Tim Ferriss talks about it when he's writing. He will put on a movie in the background that he's seen a bunch of times. And the reason why he does that is he does it for the social aspect because he writes, you know, kind of late at night and he kind of feels antisocial. Well, that's when he um, that's when he writes the best. So he likes to put on movies. So I could see this being interesting, especially I know like surf videos or Planet Earth. Um, the movie Oceans, those kind of gorgeous looking videos with great scenery. I could see where if my monitor was big enough on a bigger monitor, um, like I'm using a 24 inch now, but when I use my 15 inch MacBook, you know, it's probably not big enough. It'd be interesting to see what kind of workflow it'd be like to have just something playing in the background, so to speak. Interesting to think about. Next up, we have Ink, which is rock solid, oops, rock solid freelance contracts in minutes. Any of, you, any of those of you who have ever put together your own contract know how much of a pain in the butt it can be. So anything contract related that's easy and especially free, I want to bring your way. Oh, and also I think they make it really easy to sign, which is super nice because I know I had a huge headache trying to print out a contract and get it signed recently. So there you go. Next up, we have video. And these are more stories, so transitioning out of tool time. So video, Unlocking the Secrets of Growth in 20 Minutes by James Courier. Now, I know it's not as hypey as the one word that got Obama hired, but this is some great stuff. So James has helped 10 different companies exceed 10 million users, and he rarely allows his growth presentations to be recorded. In this 20-minute video from the web 2013, James covers the full gamut of growth and the essential ingredients behind his success. He gives a real-world explanation of growth while, exp while dispelling, rather, the myth of silver bullets. So a few of the key areas he covers, growth culture, messaging psychology, first user experience, and engineering virality. Now, Sean Ellis had this to say. I'm amazed he could pack so much information about an effective overall growth framework in a 20 minute presentation and not look rushed. He covered a lot of the same material at the Growth Hackers Conference, but he didn't allow it to be recorded. I was excited when I found this video because there are a lot of holes in my notes from the earlier presentation. I'm guessing most people will watch it more than once or pause multiple times throughout the video to write thoughts and notes. Then we also have what does an SEO do in their day-to-day -day work? Kind of an interesting question. And this is a, uh, gotta love, <laughs> gotta love what he's doing there. This is a video by Rand for his whiteboard Friday. Then we have 29 B2B growth hacks, the ultimate list. So while traditional B2B marketing focus, 
was on getting the right people and reaching them directly. Growth hacking lets you reach a much wider audience and dramatically increase your chances to get a champion. The main difference between standard B2B growth hacking is that on B2B you usually need to get to a more targeted audience. And here are 29 ways to do it. And 22 of them don't require any budget. 17 of them will take you less than a day. And someone had mentioned in comments somewhere, I believe it was on Growth Hackers, that it's a lot of new stuff. It's not the same old Airbnb growth hack you've heard 100 times. Then we have an interesting one, how the internet, dopamine, and your brain are working together to screw your potential and what you can do about it. Me personally, I love articles and posts like this. Such a big part of being an entrepreneur in this day and age is the battle that you have with yourself. Keeping your discipline, your health, and your work ethic in check are huge. I mean, really, you're almost a manager for yourself, and yourself is the artist. You know, Usually the Beatles have someone making sure that, uh, I guess the Beatles is a terrible example, but please, uh, old music fans, don't slaughter me, but any band would have you know, some sort of road manager. In the same way that you have an accountant, so there's certain things you don't have to worry about. So something we're always fighting for is our attention, our attention, our attention, our attention, and where it goes towards. Next up, speaking of which, we have start to finish guide how to launch and grow a blog or go steal some attention. So this is a really good post by Anum. I hope I said her name right. And she crushes it. She kills it on a um, on blogging. Absolutely fantastic. So she wrote this. One of the things she had mentioned is she got 22,000 engaged email subscribers and retained an average of 30,000 monthly blog viewers on the Sidekick blog that she recently launched um, for HubSpot. And I think that was in five months. Yep, within five months. So you're looking to make a blog, make it right? Check this out. Then we have discover how an expert affiliate marketer performs his Amazon keyword research. So if you are looking to dabble, maybe you've heard of a little thing called ASM, <laughs> this is for you. Next up, we have a case study, how to buy display traffic on mobile, three advertisers and three different strategies by AdBeat. Then we have why Zenefits cold emails lose their prospects. So Heather at Salesfolk breaks down why they are not doing a great job with their emails. Lastly, we have five irresistible headline writing strategies to live and breathe by. And then we have 10 fill in the blank email subject lines that made me the most money. Now, we are gonna end it out with a few honorable mentions. So these are good stories that are worth checking out, but maybe they're a little bit too niche or older or whatever reason that they made it into the honorable mentions. It can only fit so much, guys. So we have dissecting the app store top charts. We have the angel VC on the five ways to build a hundred million dollar business. We have free leads from YouTube, the four-step slam dunk process that generated 140,000 free leads from YouTube. We have how to analyze your competitor's content with this simple Google Sheets hack. This one I really like. Five advanced AdWords strategies you can implement today. A 14% increase in sales with this five-minute growth hack and Make Money Online, documenting 10 years of failure. Now, there was a really good comment on Hacker News that I want to share with you guys, and we will use that to close out this monthly reload. The general online audience has matured over the past 10 years. Most people have an excellent filter to avoid clicking ads, which includes affiliate links. You can still monetize a the site these days. It makes some money while not being sketchy, but it requires approaching it as a service to your users and not an exploit of your users. What I mean by this is that whatever your site is, if your audience has a legit interest in specific products, the next logical step in their personal workflow would be buy something. Go ahead and put in some affiliate, affiliate links. It makes sense and everyone gets what they need and desire. But if you're adding links and talking about products solely because you want those nickels from someone clicking, you're not helping your audience and they know it and they will react accordingly. I'm somewhat surprised that anyone would have spent 10 years flailing in this Maybe he said, maybe he meant to say failing in this arena and not learned that. So that is all my friends, my amigos, my compadres for this Friday reload. Feel, lead, 
feel free to leave a comment on the blog at digitaltriggers.io slash mr40. Joe had just put up some content there recently. Let me jump back to the main page. Oops. He's recently put up some awesome content on there. I don't think he put it on the podcast, so make sure you check it out. So we have putting your content syndication strategy on autopilot, a zero to 14 clients and $14,000 a month case study, and how to rank in Google Maps fast case study. So case studies, case studies, case studies, great stuff. If you wanna reach out to me, feel free to hit me at Twitter slash Dan Sweeney, D-A-N-S-W-E-E-N-E-Y. And you can also reach us on the Digital Trigger Twitter at DigTrig. Once again, I love you all. Thank you for joining me month after month, week after week, and for all these wonderful podcasts. And you guys have a good one, and let's make some more money and have better lives.